I can't tell if that's in. Hello, welcome people on the internet. The next video in the saga of Mr. Dose. I'm feeling extra weird today. Anyway, uh, if you missed the last video and want to get caught up on what's going on, up above, somewhere on the top of the screen, is a link that will fill you in on life. Now it's time to take you off the tripid and get back to work. Where we last left off, I had an electrical engineer over here who helped me figure out the circuitry for my Link standalone ECU. Now it's time to put that into fruition. This right here is a four bar map sensor or a 14.7 PSI times four sensor. Somebody got that. If it wasn't for the fact that this had vacuum lines going to it, I would try to mount it back here. I got a couple holes over here that are threaded that I could probably mount it on. That stud right there and that stud right next to it. But I'm gonna need a bracket to attach those two together. And I need to powder coat these lines down here. Those look like crap. That's gonna bother me. It makes me nervous putting this on the lift. Just cause like, it's just not meant for mid-engine cars. It's so weird, the weight distribution. So this little stick right here is going to be a new home to my map sensor. So I need to trace these onto that new bracket as a template. Like that, yeah. Something like that. Yep, that'll fit. These right here are weldable studs. So I'm gonna put studs on it. That way I don't have to fight around with hardware trying to put these things on the firewall. There. It's dry. Ta-ta-da! This is my bracket I made. Aw, oh, man. That would happen on the last one, wouldn't it? Come on, peel, you face. So I mount sensor number one and sensor number two, just like that on the bracket. And then this bolts to those two studs I showed you. Oh, this is tough. This is tough, I tell you. Where is it? There it is. So there is where the new sensors are gonna live up here on the firewall. Next up on what contraption shall Sarah make, this right here is a bushing on a stud. Bushing and stud go on firewall, plate goes on bushing and stud, and solenoid for electronic boost controller mounts to firewall. Problem solved. It's a shock mount. This should fit because it's a quarter 20. This should. It does. <laughs> I keep getting lucky. Pretty soon I'm not going to. I'm gonna get screwed on something. So now, I just mount this plate. Oh, I got a, a line in the way. Perfect. That's gonna be really close to a coolant line though, like that. Come on. Okay. I mounted the solenoid upside down so I'd clear that coolant hose right there. Between doing that and making that custom bracket down there, that was literally an entire day's work. Let's kick into a time lapse. Welcome to another day of How the Sarah Wires. It's actually two days later. I, I have a sinus infection because my swamp cooler had some nasty stuff in it. But I cleaned it out and put some bleach in it this morning. So regardless of how shitty I feel right now, I gotta get some work done. I decided if I'm gonna do all this work, I may as well upgrade my fuel rail now since I have this whole area taken apart. So I got a new fuel rail in a Bosch four bar 
fuel pressure regulator, as well as I bought some new injectors. None of this stuff is sponsored, FYI. I bought all this stuff, so I need to tear this part down here and get rid of this old nasty fuel pressure regulator and this ugly old side feed injector fuel rail. It's absolutely genius removing the trunk on this car so you can sit in it and work on the engine. So brilliant. That's a banjo bolt. That means there should be a washer on there. Oh, I didn't want to drop that. Perfect tool for when you drop stuff and you need to try to fish it out of the engine bay. Right here. Hell yeah. See, just like that. Fishing. None of this stuff has very high torque specs. Oh, I hate working upside down. My nose is running inside the engine. I ended up having booger water inside my injector holes. Shit. And that right there is the cold start fuel injector that will be replaced with an IAT sensor. Come on. Haha. -ha. This right here is a side feed injector rail. I'm replacing it with a top feed injector rail, which gives me better option for fuel injectors like the 1050s I just bought. So, and this thing looks like trash. So I get to get rid of that because it looks like trash and that bothers me. These fuel lines look like garbage. I don't know how this car never caught on fire before. Ugh, fuck, that was tight. <laughs> That's what he said. Oh, I found a nut. Crazy. I lost that a long time ago. I was wondering where that went. I pulled the valve cover because I gotta put the cam trigger in. And to do that, I gotta have the cam cap off. The problem is the hardware on the cam cap is not coming out. These are two TP27 Torx bits and they are seized. They do not want to come out. They're not stripped yet, but I'm at the point where bad things are going to start happening. You never realize how convenient it is having Metal's Tech come out for you to remove a stack bolt when you don't have them anymore. Some of you got that. Stick this back on so I don't get any shavings down inside the engine. <sighs> you gotta put some tape over that. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill off the head of that Torx bit and then once the heads are gone I'll be able to pull the cam cap off revealing the two studs that are going down inside the cylinder head which will give me a lot more material to be able to have chances to grab onto that and remove them from the head versus if I just keep going like that and shear the bolt off somewhere down inside there it could shear off at the actual block and then I'd be fine. Just like that. See? Now you can see the studs inside the cam cap. It gives me tons of material to grab onto them. So much for making progress today. This is like the worst possible stuff you have to do when you're trying to get stuff done quickly. Oh well. I don't have compressed air on my side, so I just use my car dryer. It works. So now the cam cap should just pull right off. It came right out, just threaded by hand. So now I just gotta get two of these guys and I can put the cam cap back on, which means trip to the hardware store. Ouch. There, move this guy up right here. That goes on like that. I'm gonna put just a super thin layer of RTV. This is an area that's really prone to leakage on these cars, so. These were a really weird size bolt. It's a M7, so I could like only find this type of bolt to go in here. I couldn't get picky choosy with how I want them to look. Let's see how many times I can install this valve cover before this job is done. This is like the fifth time. There, end cap is on. Before I stick these injectors in their new home, I wanna make sure it's nice and clean down inside there. The new injectors came with these little injector cups. 
I gotta use, well, actually, I think the fuel rail came with them because it sits further away from the valve cover because f science, I don't know. Lube pencil. Nothing like dropping my injector cup down into a dirty ass floor. This is tricky enough to do on its own, let alone doing it when you can't look down because your nose is just running crazy. A normal person would just have stayed home and rested, but no. I work hard for you. You're welcome. See if I can do this again without sucking at life. My lube is, my lube source is dried up. I can't tell if that's in. I'll know if I did this wrong if it starts pissing fuel all over the place when I go to start the car. I'm so glad these are easily accessible. Get off my finger, face. Get in your hole. Well, that was an absolute delight to get those things in there. You see? There's one of them. Uh, there's another one. See? Right above the Yamaha logo. There's another one. It looks like a robot cannon. That's, that's what these injectors are made by. These are robot cannon injectors. Since it's not sponsored, we're just going to call these robot cannons. My jokes are f***ing terrible. Lube. I wish I would have been able to get more progress done in this video, but I didn't really plan on getting a sinus infection, so that kind of foiled my progress. I think, I think it's going in where it's supposed to. This is a very delicate process. I feel like you could easily screw this up, and I hope I didn't just jinx myself by saying that. Just these are so delicate. I don't have fuel lines yet, so I can't finish this fuel system upgrade per se until I get those, but I couldn't really get those until I got all this stuff on there because I need to measure before I have the lines made. I don't know which way I want this thing to face. Up or out? Probably out the back side. There you go. Yep, I'm pretty happy with that. Doesn't look like a bag of trash down inside my intake manifold anymore. It's pretty clean in there. I really want to refinish this right here because I have the JDM engine, so it has the ceramic power on this label. The USDM engines didn't say ceramic power. I want to redo the font on here because I'm not going to put an aftermarket intake manifold on it. I'm trying to keep as much Toyota stuff as possible on this car. The stuff I'm upgrading is just because I'm doing a standalone ECU. So I had to upgrade that stuff. Otherwise, I would leave this all stock, but it's outdated old school electronics that are just not reliable anymore. Oh yeah? That was a butters. Isn't this weird? I'm back in my garage at my house. I figured I'd end this video off in here because you guys haven't seen this in a while and you haven't seen this in a while. And I know I keep getting some questions about when you're gonna start seeing some Ranger videos, and I think that should be obvious as soon as the MR2 drives out of my shop and back to this garage under its own power, that thing is immediately going back to the shop and I'm gonna start tearing this thing apart. But or should we show them all the parts you got for the Ranger? Okay. I basically turned my little home gym into half of a Ford Ranger, so this whole pile of parts right here are all parts for the truck. This is all stuff that's going on it. So all those parts that you just saw are just drivetrain components parts. Ooh, ugh. If I had the ability to tear this apart in my shop right now, I would so that way I could bounce back and forth between the MR2 and the Ranger while I'm waiting on parts for either vehicle but I have to leave one of my lifts open when I do my car views because I always put a car up on the air when I do a car view. And if I have both of these torn apart on either side of the shop, then there's no room to fill my car views in there. So I already need a bigger shop as it is. This is crazy. So with that said, I will be starting on this thing soon. I promise you this content is coming. It's on the way. And despite still kind of feeling a little bit like crap today, I'm actually on my way over to the shop and I'm gonna knock out some more of the wiring. I'm trying to slip that into just little bits of B-roll into the videos so that way you're not bombarded with video after video after video of wiring. So I slid it into this video you just watched today and you barely even noticed, I bet. It was an entire day worth of wiring slid into a time lapse. Although I felt like crap most of that day so I didn't really feel like talking on camera. 
But anyway, I'm rambling now, so I will see you guys soon with another video, and maybe I'll do a live stream uh, this weekend. If, will that be tomorrow? If you guys are down, I don't, I don't know. I'll see how the comments look. If you guys want to see one or not, okay? Bye.